President Trump came to the defense of his former national security advisor today. Michael Flynn pleaded guilty on Friday to lying to the FBI about his contacts with Russia. Today, the president called the charges very unfair. We'll have more on the unfolding Russia investigation later in the program. Mr. Trump is also throwing his full support behind Roy Moore, the Republican Senate candidate in Alabama. In tweets today, the president said Democratic opposition to tax cuts is, quote, why we need Roy Moore to win in Alabama, end quote. Moore has denied knowing any of the women who say he pursued them as teenagers when he was in his 30s. But one said today she's come across a signed card from Moore for her high school graduation. Hundreds of American and South Korean warplanes have begun five days of war games over South Korea. The exercises began just days after North Korea tested its most powerful intercontinental ballistic missile ever. Two dozen F-22s and F-35 stealth jets, U.S., joined in the war games, dubbed Vigilant Ace. But North Korea charged they're pushing the region to the brink of nuclear war. The U.S. Supreme Court will allow the latest version of President Trump's travel ban to take effect, full effect, for now. That ruling came late today and applies to six mostly Muslim nations, Chad, Iran, Libya, Somalia, Syria, and Yemen. We get more now from Marsha Coyle of the National uh, Law Journal. Uh, Marsha, good to have you with us. Walk us through, what did the court do today? There's a little bit of legal intricacy to it. Okay. Essentially, the court issued an order saying that the president's latest travel ban may take full effect while legal challenges to the merits of the ban are uh, moving forward in the lower courts. There are two federal appellate courts that just this week will be hearing the merits of the travel ban. Uh, one is uh, in the Ninth Circuit, which is on the West Coast, and the other is in the Fourth Circuit, which is on the East Coast. Lower courts had uh, partially allowed this particular travel ban to go in effect, but it had exempted from the travel ban uh, individuals that had what they call a bona fide relationship with U.S. citizens or entities in the United States. So what happens on the lower courts now? Does, it, does that all stop? No, not at all. In okay. fact, the, the lower courts are expediting these cases, and the Supreme Court said today that it expects, because it's expediting them, that they will uh, reach a decision with appropriate dispatch. So the travel ban will be in effect not only while those courts are deciding whether the travel ban is constitutional or uh, uh, correct under the, the immigration statutes, but also possibly through Supreme Court review itself. All right, so what did uh, astute court watchers, such as yourself, learn today, reading the tea leaves on this one, as to how the court ultimately feels about this one? Okay, you really can't predict with certainty, but when the court does something like this, the government, which prevailed, had to show the court that its arguments supporting the ban were serious. So it may well be sending a signal to the lower courts that are looking at it that it believes the government may prevail this time on the merits. All right, Marsha Coyle of the National Law Journal, thank you very much. My pleasure, Miles. The high court also grappled today with a case that could make sports betting widely available. New Jersey is leading more than a dozen states against a federal law that restricts sports gambling in most of the country. The arguments continued after the hearing with New Jersey Governor Chris Christie and Les Burnell of the Stop Predatory Gambling Foundation making their points. Those states may or may not ultimately have sports gaming if it were allowed. I think many of them wouldn't. But what they do know is that letting the federal government get involved in states being able to govern their own citizens in a, in a broad and impermissible way, as it was done here, is dangerous for everyone. Government-sanctioned sports gambling is, is extremely predatory, and it's really government-sanctioned consumer fraud. It would change the way kids watch sports. In countries that have legalized uh, sports gambling, like Australia and, and the United Kingdom, kids, kids associate gambling with sports. The four major U.S. professional sports leagues, the NCAA, and the federal government are opposing the state's lawsuit. New York's Metropolitan Opera is now investigating multiple sexual abuse claims against longtime conductor James Levine. He's been suspended for the rest of the current season after three men said he abused them as teenagers between the 1960s and 80s. Meanwhile, former TV host Billy Bush says it's definitely President Trump's voice bragging about lewd behavior on an Access Hollywood recording from 2005. 
That comes amid reports that Mr. Trump is suggesting it's a fake. In Sunday's New York Times, Bush wrote, of course he said it. And he said the president is indulging in some revisionist history. On Wall Street today, the market bought phone company and bank shares and sold tech stocks with an eye toward who wins and loses under a tax overhaul. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 58 points to close at 24,920. The Nasdaq fell 72 points, and the S&P 500 slipped two. And former Congressman John Anderson died overnight in Washington. The Illinois Republican ran as an independent for president in 1980 against Democratic President Jimmy Carter and Republican Ronald Reagan. He won 7% of the vote. John Anderson was 95 years old.